Uh, today, we're going to team up. Today, we're going to go over what we started last week. And do you remember the, fir the two sides of the ar argument? Calvinism and Armenian. Right. You said it right, Elmer? He said yes. Okay. <laughs> Calvinism and Armenianism. Okay, anybody want to take a crack at it? What each side pretty much believes? Predestination is Calvinism, and then the Armenianism is free will. Right, right. All right, awesome. Okay, so pretty much in a nutshell, uh, Calvinism is the, is the fact that God is sovereign over everything, that He actually saved you. You didn't have anything to do with it. He saved you before the world created. He chose you, and He knew you, He was going to save you. Free will, on the other hand, says God looked into the future, saw that you were going to choose Him, so that's why He chose you. That you, out of your own free will, chose God, and God didn't impose on you. You chose it out of yourself. Your own free will. Okay, so those are the two sides, both in the Bible. And today we're going to explore a little. So we're going to split the class into two, and we're going to do a little study on our own. Uh, so I'm going to pass these out. I made a little chart for you guys. Uh, let's see, if you wouldn't mind, just pass these around your side. Cam, if you wouldn't mind passing these around your side. Yeah. Alright, so we're just going to go over it real quick, and then I'm going to have you guys do your own little work on it. Alright, but before we go any further, let me ask you guys a question. Um, who is uh, at least 85% sure that they're saved. They're going to heaven. If you were to die, if I were to kill you right now, you're going. Two people, 85%. She's 100%. Okay, she's 100%. I my spot. Wow, she doesn't doubt her spot. She's got her house marked out. Jesse's 100. Josh, are you 80 or 100? 100%. My goodness. 100% is all right. So everybody else, we're still unsure. All right, and the the whole goal of why we've been studying this is because for Christians, we should know, we should, and actually you can know. The Bible is very clear that we should really make it our highest effort, our greatest goal to know if you're gonna if you're gonna if you are truly saved, um, and that's why we're talking about this today because we know we're saved because God actually was working this out before the foundation of the world. That was That's something we're going to focus on today. So think about yourself when you got saved. And maybe you can ask one or two people, when you, when you got saved, do you think it was all you? Or was God kind of working and drawing you throughout your life? You know, if you can make, uh, what do you think? Because I've been thinking about that myself this week. It may take a lot to remember, you know, from birth until now. You know, was there just a date where you said, I'm going to be a Christian now? Or do you think there was, I don't know, maybe God was doing something and you just started to see Him working? Anybody? I think it just took time for me. It's like, from the point I said, uh, I accept the Lord to now, it was definitely a process. Uh, when I accepted the Lord, I can, I was all full of fire and going for it, but I fell really hard, and then it wasn't consistent. But now, I can definitely tell that, hey, I'm 100% saved, and I don't feel compelled to do, come to church. I don't feel obligated to come to church. I want to come to church. And so, I, I let me just for the people who didn't raise your hand, like I'm hundred percent. For the people who are hundred uh, percent, have you? Do you guys ever sin? You guys do that all, all the time. time. You all the time, huh? Okay. And probably the people who aren't sure <laughs> sin too. And maybe that's a factor of why you think now there ain't no way I can be saved because I fail, uh, and sometimes on purpose. Maybe a lot of the time on purpose, you know. Um, and is that, does that disqualify you? And uh, that's, we've been, we've been going through a whole series on it. We're going to get a little deeper into it after we finish predestination. But 
you know, what we're understanding is God saved you by His grace. You didn't, you cannot earn it. If He gave it to you, it's because He wants you in. He wants you in, not because you're awesome. You know, if that's not it, we're not perfect. All of us are wretched human beings. You know, as attractive as Julia, cute little girl she is, she's bad, you know, she's a sinful little girl. You know, if God were to look at her righteousness, He would throw up. You know, that's, that's how it is for every one of us. Our, our righteousness, our right deeds, terrible. Can nothing. It's got to be a gift because we, there is no way we could ever just match up to His holiness. To ever be in His presence, we can't. All right? So, uh, just my, I feel like for me, I was born into a Christian family. For me to try to understand how I got to this point, it, I get a headache. I just don't know. But I do, I do personally feel like it, God was kind of pushing me in the direction. That, but at the same time, I made my choice. I feel both. So how did that make sense? Uh, that's what we're going to talk about. So um, let's jump into it. I gave you five points. Each side has five points. Calvinism and Arminianism. And they're both trying to understand how people get saved. How do people get saved? What's the process? That's all this is. Are Calvinists and Armenians both saved? Or, or is one side not really a Christian if you believe one side? Does anybody know? No, they're both saved. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. That's true. It's an in-house debate, okay? It's an in-house debate. You could be on either side and you're still saved. It's, whether you disagree is okay. What's more biblical? That's what we're going for. All right, so there's five points. And I'm just going to briefly go over it, and then I want you guys to, to get your own thing, and I'm going to quiz you after. We'll have a little war. Uh, all right, so Calvinism, the five points, is, is summed up in this acronym TULIP. Total depravity. Briefly, it means we're all so wretched we could never even want God. We're so messed up. We're dead in our sins. Free will, on the, Arminianism, on the other hand, says... Uh, we still have that ability to choose God. Even though we are very sinful, we don't want God, we still have some ability to choose Him. Calvinism, the second point, unconditional election, is that God elected us uh, by His own will. Uh, well, but you guys can go into it a little deeper. By His sovereignty, He chose you. Conditional election on the Arminianism side is God... Like I said, he looked in the future, saw you were going to choose him, and that's why he chose you. Calvinism, limited atonement. This is the, this is the tough one, just so you guys know. This is a, I don't quite agree with it. When Christ died on the cross, he shed his blood only for the people who were elected, not everybody. Not the whole world, just the people who were elected. Um, Arminianism, on the other hand, believes in unlimited atonement, that Christ actually died for the whole world, everyone. Irresistible grace on the Calvinism side says that when God wants to save you, you cannot resist it. He's going to do it. Um, and that's, you know, that's probably how like David Salgado, when he talks to a girl, we just know he got her, you know. <laughs> we, just, we know it's a done deal. So that's like with God, is that God, when he starts pursuing, it's done. He's, he's got her, you know. He's, so that's the idea. Resistible grace, you know, on the other hand, when you know, maybe David... Uh, Hernandez tries to pursue the girl can actually say no I resist you you know that doesn't happen yeah so whether it happens or not I don't know so our mediatism side that's the case is that God pursues but actually people we can resist say no I don't want you God uh, and the last two on the Calvinist side perseverance of the saints means that you will God will keep you till the end you're not going to lose your salvation and Arminianism says actually you can lose your salvation. And there's some. some believe that you can't. That's true. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but yes, you can. Arminianism believes that you could lose your salvation? Some, yeah. some, pe some believe that you can't. But yeah, the majority, I think, believes that you can. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to give you guys this. I want you to team up and just study a point. And then, uh, and then we're going to have a discussion on each point, and you guys can just tell me what you think, whether you believe it or not. First, what is it saying? What is the Bible saying? We're in context. What is it saying? And then fight with it. 
don't fight with it before you, you know, really, what, what does the verses say? That's all I'm saying. Because uh, all of us come into this with already a preconceived thoughts on either side. Like anything. But when you go to the Bible, you have to be willing to, you know, I'm starting over. Not that either one is wrong. I'm, not, I'm just saying we've got to be careful. Um, because, you know, some, some of us, we grew up a certain way, believing in certain things. So, free will or total depravity. Um, there's a lot of argument on that. But uh, I, I don't know if you read Ephesians 2.1. I'll tell you what I know that the Calvinist side says. Ephesians 2.1 says, You are dead in your trespasses and sins. The argument is, is that when we chose to sin, when in the garden, when Adam and Eve chose to sin, they became a slave to sin. Like it says in the Bible, you are slaves to sin. You are a slave to the God of this world in Ephesians 2.1. And that our free will is bound to do what our flesh wants. We can't, we're so enslaved to do what our flesh wants and our evil desires want that we don't have the ability to choose God. And that's why God has to intervene because we're, because we're dead in our trespasses and sins. So that's the argument, um, which, you know, biblically I can see. It, it is hard to, but I can see that one too. And like, Kim, yours was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes will be saved. Sounds like whoever believes is saved. And then it gave my... gave the, um, the no one is righteousness. The no one has righteousness. It, saying that we're all sinners, right? right? But then a couple verses down it's declaring... Abraham is righteous, and righteous through his belief, faith. through his faith. Right. So. Yeah. So no one's righteous, and and the reason for that is that there's no goodness in anybody. That's what it was trying to point to. We don't have any goodness. We're totally depraved. All right. Let's move on. Next one. Jasmine and uh, Jesse, unconditional election. What are your thoughts? Well, I guess kind of going off of what Carla started, it says that. Um, we're kind of like robots in the sense that everything that we, well, that uh, there's nothing we can do because God already decided for us. So, so we just go off of that. So Romans 9, 16 says, so then when it depends not on human's will or, I don't know what that word is, but on God who has mercy. <clears throat> so that's, that's what it's saying. That it's not dependent on your free will as humans. But it's dependent on God's um, mercy for you that you've been saved. That's what Romans 9.16 says. And then we also have Ephesians uh, 1.11. And that says, In him we have ob obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who walks or who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Um, so our verses are basically saying that it's all on God, on God's will, on God's counsel, that um, He saved you and that He chose you and elected you before the beginning of time. That is, that is our point as um, unconditional um, right. election. So if I were to ask you, what do you think the biblical verses support that first? Uh, yes, I think uh, that the biblical verse that I'm reading support the unconditional election um, which means that you have no choice in it you've been um, elected and chosen and you don't have a say in it uh, God put it in you right and you're going to work through what God has put in you okay and um, you're there's no way of losing it that's what um, well, my biblical that verses. Part, yeah, but yes. Okay, so it does sound like from the verses, like it, God chooses who He has mercy on, like that, right? Nice. It sounds like God decides, all right. And not not that we don't agree with it, but first, does yeah, it sound true. like the what is the Bible <coughs> saying? You know, some stuff we ain't gonna like, but is that what it's saying? That's that's the first step, um, and then there's the other side. You know, so Jasmine, you said it sounds like it's robotic. Right? Pro programmed. Programmed. Yes. Okay. All right. What does the other side have to say? 
Okay, we're going to use um, Romans 8.29. Sure. And it says, When he foreknew, he had also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first born among many brethren. Go ahead, So we're thinking maybe that means God picked people that he knew would pick him. So, like, he didn't have to see into the future and, like, pick someone that is, like, an atheist. He's like, I choose you, but they could totally deny him until the day, like, they die. Okay. So, what do you guys think? Do you agree with it? I kind of do. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else like that one? Josh? You don't like it? Hmm. All right. So, free will, on the other hand, is that you aren't robots. God chose you because you, he knew you were going to chose him because he's able to look into the future. He's actually in the future and the past, and he can see that, yes, Kimberly was going to accept me, so I choose you. Okay? Yes, sir? I agree with it, agree with it for the most part because, like, I grew up in, like, a Catholic household, and so I feel like kind of it was, like, pre I feel like it's a mixture of both, like, predestined because, well, I don't know, she pretty much, like, Jasmine introduced me to the church, and I feel like God's like, okay, like, I know you believe, and, like, if you believe in me, like, she brought me here, and it was my choice if I liked the church or not, and I right, did, so right. I stayed, but I had the choice to leave if I didn't like it or not. Yeah. So I feel like it's just like a little mix of both. Maybe. All right. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, Elmer and Victor, thoughts on limited atonement? The heavy one. <laughs> Some people might want to stone you. Yeah, that went, that went hard, bro. <laughs> we didn't finish. Oh, that's all right. What do you think? Just so far. What do you th do you think? Uh, what is it first? What is it? What's what is the matter? Because not everybody looked at it, so just educate us, college guys. I'm just kidding. I feel like you're not going to pass out candies. I'm just uh, yeah, I feel like you're not going. Yeah, sorry. Carla's going to give candy to everybody who's talking so far. <laughs> Uh, what do you think, Elmer? I don't know. Elmer. Or the peanut one. Thank you, Carla. Victor, any thoughts so far? All right, so let me help you guys. Limited atonement is the fact that when Christ died, wait, right, don't give Elmer one yet. He didn't answer. Oh yeah. When Christ died, who did he die for? Us. Who is us? The saved people. The saved people. Okay, that's in in the view of limited atonement is that Christ Jesus only died for the people that were saved, that were predestined. And they're saved, all right? Not for everyone. Yep. Okay. And it gives some verses. John 10, 11, it says, My sheep will hear me and know my voice. Sounds like just, you know, there's selection. There's selection involved. All right? What do you guys think? Do you think that sounds right? Do you not like it? No, I don't like it. You don't like it. Okay. Victor don't like it either. It doesn't make sense. Does it? It doesn't set, does, like fit the whole picture. Does it not fit? Okay. Victor's not sure. Can I chime in and help them? All right, give them a chime. All right, so I'm gonna help them. Uh, limited, limited atonement says that God predestined and selected those that He um, knew would. Oh, not new language, but he predestined and selected. Like, let's say Carla, I predestined um, to go to he heaven, Kimberly, and that's it. Okay? So now these people are going to be going into heaven, and everybody else is going to hell. Because I didn't select, because God didn't select you to go into heaven. Yeah, and there's, that's, there's double predestination. If that's God what, didn't what choose you to go to heaven, then he must have chose you to go to hell. Exactly. That's where it gets a little hairy. And I have, like, something to argue against, not against you, but against limited atonement. So if you knew, like, if they're saved regardless, then what is the point of Jesus' death? Like, if they're, like, if he chose you anyways, yeah. like, this is what's going to happen, why? Or baptized. Yeah, why okay. anything? Like, sure. Why be baptized? Why? But I mean, like, whether, like, so he chose me, and then, so he's also choosing to kill his son. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, <laughs> and, and, again, yeah. again. Uh, <laughs> that, so just so you know, out of all, out of all of them, limited atonement is the one that's most disagreed upon, mm -hmm. even between Calvinists. Yep. That's the one that it just. It sounds logical along with all the others, but it not doesn't sound quite biblical. Uh, let's keep moving. Uh, Steve, on your rebuttal against limited atonement, what do you think? What is an unlimited atonement? That sounds like universal atonement. So uh, not that... It's not necessarily... Well, somebody help him out? What do you guys think? Is he, Steve right? On unlimited atonement, he said everyone is saved no matter what. What do you guys think? Is that unlimited atonement? Everyone is saved? Everyone is saved no matter what. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. No, that's not right. Okay, what is unlimited atonement? No, that, that, that concept is not. And so, just so you know, you may have just got the wording wrong, but that when you say everyone's saved no matter what, that's called universalism. That means everybody in the world is going to be saved, sinner or not, and one day everybody's going to be saved. But unlimited atonement is, is teaching that God, Jesus died for everybody to give everybody opportunity. Everybody has opportunity. Everybody, Jesus died for everyone to have a chance to get it. All right? And in 1 John 2, 2, it says Jesus, you know, he died for the sins of the whole world. The Calvinist view is the whole world actually means all the predestined people. All right, let's keep moving. Irresistible grace. David goes up to a girl, she cannot resist his charm. Is that true with God? Tell us. Um, so, I was reading it out of Um. So, what it means is like, you can't not, like, you can't, no matter what, like, if he chooses you, like, you're chosen, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was reading that, like, if it was, like, resistible grace, that's more like you earned it, you earned to be saved, whereas irresistible grace is more, more like a gift, a gift from God. Yeah. And the, the verses that were on here, like, they kind of support the irresistible grace, because in Romans 9, 18, it says... So then he has mercy on whoever he wills, and he pardons whoever he wills. Meaning, if it's you, like, if he picks you, then it's you, then you can't really do anything. Right, right. And Acts 13, 48 says, And when the Gentiles heard this, they began to re they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord, and as many as were appointed to eternal life. So whoever was appointed to eternal life believed. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. Jerson was reading that last night, you know. Do you want to give Jesse a chance to chime in? Yeah. All right. Um, I think there's biblical proof that um, you can resist God. Well, we're going to get into that. That's the next verse. No, okay. Do you want to let let's, David talk let's, about that? Uh, wait a minute. Do, was that what you had? Which one? What did you have? Uh, that's, uh, oh, okay, so nobody had resistible grace. Okay, go for it, Jack. Go for it. <laughs> Marty did. She's gone. Go ahead. She did? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. well, um, my biblical proof is Jonah, and when he told him to repent and be baptized, um, he told Nineveh, or to go to Nineveh and repent and be baptized, and Jonah just said, no, you know, I'm not going to go. I'm actually going to go a different way, and he went a different way. So he resists God's um, he eventually did it, though. Yeah, he eventually did it, but to the <laughs> yeah. the point is, is it resistible? And right. yes, it's well, resistible. I, I don't know that it's. Uh, I hear what you're saying. I don't yeah, know that it means. God. It means that maybe you can, you know, you can resist it for a time, but not forever. Well, God no, but God is gonna. God. That's he's not gonna what do this it. says. This says irresistible grace. God says it. You're gonna do it. it it's not that. It's not that. Because, you know, we resist every day. We don't want to, we sin, you know. And that, is, that goes along with everything. Eventually, way. he's going to get you. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. Eventually, that's he's going to get you, yes. Yeah. And no, that, that's where our choice comes in. Well, that's, uh, on your, only on your example didn't didn't work. That's what all. if you resist God and you're, like, going to, like, God's going to get you eventually, but you die before he gets you. Then what? 
Well, then, then the verse that would come into place would be, well, perse perseverance of the saints, that's the next one. What? That's the next one. <laughs> oh, okay. But yes, no, that's... like, what about people who have, like... Well, actually, well, what you're saying is it possible for someone God chooses to never actually because they decided because that they, they were died. Gonna, yeah, because they, they decided just, that they wanted to like satisfy flesh before. Who, anybody have the answer? There is no answer. Nobody's gonna you? ever know, girl. <laughs> Nobody will know. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> can you resist God's grace? In Hebrews three fifteen, it says. Remember what it says today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. Don't resist God. You know, so there's some verses that may point to it. Um, so let's just look at the last two before we head out. Um, so you guys in the back, perseverance of the saints, go ahead. What do you think? I would say that like a... I believe it's like God chooses people and then uh, I know that he made they say he's chosen he chooses them and then uh so they, uh, man, man the word that's all right let me read this verse to you and then you tell me what it thinks what, what do you think uh first John 2 19. Uh, these people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us when they left. It proved that they did not belong with us. Perseverance so, of the Saints. So you're saying that one, that, uh, that they were not really, well, they're, they weren't meant for the believer or whatever? Right. So that, that right. God didn't cho choose them? But. Yeah, if they left, that means they were never chosen. Yeah, That's what it chosen. sounds like. Here, how about this one? 27, John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them from me. So that one's saying, that one's like saying that God chose those people. and like, Yeah, yeah, once you, once you, once you chose them, like no, nothing can leave them like... Yeah. Apart from, from yeah. God, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, do you, what do you think? Does it sound right to you? Does it not sound right? Yeah, I think it, I think it does. Uh, well, reading the verse... Yeah, because it's saying, like, say, like, God chose them already, you know? Like, and can, can you ever lose your salvation? This is what it's saying. If God chose you, maybe predestined, can you ever lose your salvation? Can you ever... Yes, sir? Well, I feel like if you lose it, then you never work. That's that's what it sounds like from the verse we read before. They if they left, that means they were never really part of us. Okay. So and this verse in John ten twenty seven it says, No one can snatch them from me. They're my sheep. No and then even in Romans eight, it says, No nothing can separate us from the love of God. No hell, demon, no nothing. Can you lose it? Alright, and on the other side, Josh, what do you think? So Falling from grace, those who are truly saved can lose their salvation by falling away from the faith. Um, I use Galatians 5 4, which is, You have been saved from Christ. You have, are you who are seeking to be justified by the law? You have fallen from grace. Uh, pretty much, people take that out of context, uh, saying that uh, they are fallen from grace. So, yeah, you can fall from a salvation. But I don't believe that, and what I've read is pretty much it's out of context because it's saying those that are um, those that are looking to be justified by the law are looking at the law and trying to trying to work for their salvation okay. instead of accepting grace. Uh, and when it's talking okay. about we have fallen from grace, it's Pretty not deep. about grace salvation. Saying that uh, they. Um, <laughs> Man, this guy's smart. <laughs> but, they <are> reje <laughs> but they are rejecting the grace found in the cross, returning to the law. So, what, what do you do? You agree or not agree? I don't agree with that. You don't agree no. with it. Okay. Yeah, so one you, saved, one saved. Okay. So you say okay. So so there's and we see the verses on either. All right, and that's that's the thing. Uh, we're we're pretty much done. I'm just going to read you this. Um, 
Well, right. there's some quotes here. This is Rick Warren. No, no. Rick Warren says this, uh, My faith, my hermeneutics, does not demand that I correlate every verse. In other words, there are different verses that appear. I'm a John 3, 6 Christian. Yes. I believe God so loved the world. I do believe that. And I believe that whoever believes in Him shall not perish. But I also believe, <coughs> you know, predestination from the foundation of the earth. So to me, I'm able to hold, hold tensions in my mind rather than having to explain them. To me, I don't fit in a really good box, and I believe them both. So I, what I did on the door is on the other side, I put Revelations 22, and it says, Whoever wills, come. Whoever wants water, come. And then on this side of the door, I put Ephesians 1.4. It says, Even as He chose us before the foundation of the world. So, you know, in a sense, you guys chose to walk in the door, and then when you look back, you say, Oh, shoot, He actually chose me. Uh, you know, and that's... <laughs> Yeah, right. So, so what it you know what you guys have to wrestle with is that just think about this. Think about the crucifixion, Jesus dying on the cross. God says He planned it out. Did He actually turn everyone into robots so that His plan would work, or did everybody just do what they wanted to do? At somehow God was sovereign over the whole thing and knew. And designed it at the same time, our free will is totally intact. Mm -hmm. I, I, how does it work? Rick Warren can't figure it out, okay? How do you, but they're both there. That's the problem. And how does it, you know, it's difficult. So next week we'll just try to sum it up. I'm going to quiz you a little bit next week. That's what all the candy was for. Did anybody not get one? Morning. David, you want some? <laughs> All right, you want a Star Wars? Skittles. All right. So next week I'll uh, next next week we'll do some more. So this is just opening you up to it. Please, please. Opening up to it. All right, let's pray and we'll roll out.